and we're on. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the church we have that allows us to come in and just do whatever we want. And thank you for the big board. I had to get on the ladder just to just to write. Thank you for uh, just the, the good visuals, Father. Thank you that uh, we're, at, we're at a topic, Lord, that we, we really need to resolve in, in our spirits. And, um, and it, it, it requires a, a little bit of study. It requires a little bit of childlike faith. Uh, it requires trust. And pray that you help us to maneuver our way through that and not get, not get, not get our spirits just, just filled with, with, with all the deep thinkers think, Lord. It's just, it's just a matter of childlike faith. Bless the teaching of your word today, Father, especially. Um, and we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're sharing with someone that I wrote six pages, had a lesson prepared for today, and I tossed it all in the, in the trash can. Uh, because it had a, a way, way too much of Leo in it, and, uh, and, uh, and that's not what this is about, amen, it's about, hey, 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 it's, it's about the word, right, it's about the word, and um, we're just going to try to present truth to you, and, um, and talk about it, try to break some sense, where in Luke chapter 10, verse number 20, on uh, a verse that has just like, has this kind of stall here for uh, what's going to be uh, at least three weeks. It's a topic that we we have to spend some time on. Um, and uh, Luke chapter 10 and verse 20, the verse is, Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written, are written, are written. I uh, like what Clara said last week. She said she did a word study on that word written, and it means to be, to be etched or to be engraved. And uh, I think that's I think that's that's relevant food for thought. So you know the, the background we cover quickly. The, the seventy are sent out. The seventy come back. They're excited and and they say to Jesus, "Man, Lord, woo, even the spirits are subject unto us." Listen, that's pretty exciting. But you ever had that kind of day where you, as soon as your foot set on the ground, uh, 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 the devil trembled. And, it, and everywhere, you, everywhere you walk, you spoke the word, felt his presence, and everything in line. Listen, those are great days. I don't get many of those. I don't get many of those. There's much something wrong with me. But they come back and they're excited. And, and, and Jesus comes back with a strange response. He says, that's very good, child. Very good. But, but don't rejoice in that. But rejoice rather that your names are written. And we said last week, and which, which is has us here, that in the English English language there are laws, and that verse number twenty, that the verb, uh, the verb written in the English language. Again, we say the English language. These are laws. The tenses are laws. That the tense of this word of the Greek verb is in the perfect tense. Uh, just like we made the statement last week, Mom says, "What I have made supper." I have made supper, supper is made. The kids come home two hours later and say, Mom, are, are you going to cook supper? And Mom says, what? Mom says, I have made supper. Etched in time, Mom has made supper. Two weeks later, the fact will remain that recorded in time is the fact that cannot be changed that Mom <coughs> made supper. Supper is made. It's etched. It's etched in history. 50 years later, 100 years later, the same, the same record will be there. And listen, it's not my desire to add uh, to add confusion to to the topic, um, and um, I, I don't like to do that. That's why I say if I if the more I get myself out of the way, the clearer it will be. But you know, you, you remember the time I said to you that it was about about a month ago. I, I was caught this this thread on Facebook of a guy who come out and he said he said nowhere in the Bible does it talk about the Trinity. I just, I just, I just was 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 kind of grazing, grazing Facebook, and I just said, but bam! I said, oh snap! And I said, I just kind of just like, I mean, people talking. I just like, listen, first John five seven. That's, I just like first John five seven, right? And there are three. The Bible says that they record in heaven: the Father, the, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And I was waiting to get a response from him, and I had, in the back of my Bible, I had 17 more verses I was going to drop on him. But all of a sudden, he was gone. He was gone. 
because people people just want to believe what they believe. And unfortunately, we have Christians in this church, in that church, and in every church that we, we have a belief that we just believe, but we couldn't find five verses to prove it to ourselves. We just can't. And, but man, but man we'll, we'll go on still believing that thing, right? So what we're hoping to do is to take a belief and add some meat, put some meat on the bone, and maybe see if we can get some better understanding. We talked last week a little bit about the power of God, and um, and uh, we're going to continue on that for, for a little bit. Not much, because we're going to move on to the promise of God and the picture the picture in heaven. Building block number seven is where we're at. Our anchor holds. Um, uh, I expect my anchor to hold. When, when, when we sing the song, my anchor holds within the veil, I believe that my anchor will hold. I just believe it. When I sing the song that says, no matter what you've done, you can erase his love. I believe it. I just believe it. And so we, we mentioned last week that uh, we talked about the idea of, of having faith like a child. That, you know, listen, we could, we could get, we could get in the left-hand corner. We could put Calvin. We could put Calvinism. And over here on the right side, uh, uh, we, we could put Arminianism. And we could get all into the deep, deep things of what that means. Election, pre predestination, lordship, salvation. We can talk about all those things, but I mentioned last week that really what it takes is, listen, the truth that the Lord has just dropped on these 70, it's going to take faith like a child to believe. Because he said what? He said, listen, don't rejoice in that. My children, rejoice in the fact that your names are written. In the book of life, and we we read some verses on the book of life that we know is pretty important. I use Mass, Matthew eighteen three to refer last week to Jesus' teaching on how that uh, uh, on how that unless we become like a child, and that's what Jesus said, not Leo said that Jesus said unless you become like a child, you won't even enter in. It takes faith like a child. And, and, and the problem is that sometimes as you go out and share the gospel, people are thinking with adult minds, and our adult minds are wasted. And our adult mind, that's why, that's why we have to renew our minds, because our adult minds are a murmur. And we, I use Matthew 18, 13. Now, someone might say to me, well, Mr. Sunday School teacher, Leo, you brag about being a context studier. So what does Matthew 18, 13 have to do with Luke chapter 10, verse 20? I will say I'm glad that you asked that because, because Jesus isn't done speaking. Jesus isn't done speaking. Let's get, let's get past verse number 20 and read 21 through 24. Jesus makes a statement, obviously, in verse 20, but then he says, in that hour, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in his spirit. And said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal it. And he turned to him, uh, he, and he turned him himself unto his disciples and said, I privately, blessed are you are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you, prophets, kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard. Trust me when I say when 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 Leo shares a verse, a verse, a verse over here. Uh, verse over here, uh, 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 that same truth is going to make sense somewhere else. And that same truth is going to make sense somewhere else. And that same truth is going to make, you know, it, it's going to be, it's going to be, it, all these verses talk about the same thing. All those verses talk about the, talk about the same thing. Church of Christ is going to want to take you to what? Acts 2.38 and just, and then build, and build a doctrine on baptismal regeneration, but they can't take it anywhere else can't. 
So understand that when we talk, when when we talk about, about a verse here and a verse there, we're building a principle. Jesus rejoices. Jesus, this, do you know that this is one of only two places in the gospel that Jesus is found rejoicing? When these are these are things that 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 trigger study in my mind when I when I when I when I read that and I, I become a, a, aware of that I, I I just get enticed to want to read his word more. One of only now right, listen now now I want to go to the other place right if he if if the son of God was only seen or uh, rejoicing two places in the gospel I want to know what they are. It, it just it, it entices me to want to read. When you say it was too much Leo, you threw it in the trash. What do you mean? What I mean is, uh, well, I, I think this is a topic. I think this is a topic, Joyce, that we, we want to be clear. Um, we want to be clear that is, um, that is, that is Bible based, yeah. that is based on doctrine. I'm going to share, I'm going to share my, my, my opinion of the scripture, uh, when it's all said and done. But what I also, because we, we have a class that we're calling True Indoctrination, and so uh, we're here to present truth. We're, we're not here, not here to, to force feed uh, anything to the class. We want to present in abundance the Word of God. And yeah, that's, uh, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to have an opinion. Okay. I'm going to have an opinion. I think it's interesting if you note in verse number 21, that the whole Trinity is present. Notice in verse 21 that the entire Trinity uh, is present. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in his spirit and begins thanking the Father. You have the Father, the Son, and you have the Holy Ghost on the same, on the same. Listen, when Jesus says these words, something happens, something happens in his spirit that he cannot help but utter. It is, it is something that just that just swells up inside of him. And if, if you're on the scene and you're watching this, what do you do with it? Do, do, you know, do you see it objectively? Do you see it as a lesson in theology? Do we do we get our checklist and right and start to say, well, well, yeah, 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 that, that aligns up with what I believe. Yeah, that's that's what I heard somebody else say. Like when we come to a scene like this, how do we assess it? <clears throat> that might be what an adult would do. But I bring your attention to verse number 21 where he says, In order to get this, in order to understand this, in order to understand that now. That now, right now, I'm saying to you, right now, I'm saying to you, your name is written. That's what, that's, listen, we can't, we can't take the, the English tense uh, because it, it doesn't mean anything as we're talking about. I go here and they go there. And then we can't be sold out to the, to the laws of, of tenses and be in agreement and then take the same principle and apply it to the word of God and say, well, hmm, I wonder what that means. It means the same thing. You can't change it. And Jesus said to these people, what I'm, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you, listen, is it me? In verse 21, he said, listen, it, it's not the wise people that are going to get this. It's not the prudent people that are going to get this. Kings and prophets have wanted to understand this. I speak unto you as Babes, I speak unto you. Listen, oh, if we could live our life as children of God instead of being adults, trying to fix back. Listen, you know what? You get to John chapter seventeen, where where where, where Jesus is about to about to tap out tap out of this world and, and and pass it off to the Father, and Jesus says, "What, Father?" Everyone that you gave me, I've kept, except the son of perdition. So when we get to a passage, listen, everyone wants to talk about Judas, right? 
Hey, let's talk. What happened to Judas? Oh my. Well, what about this and what about that? Yet the truth is that Jesus is saying, everyone that everyone that you gave me, I'm now leaving. And I've kept everyone. But with our doubts mind, with our doubt minds, we have to question. We have to question. We 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 overlook the the the, the simple truth of his word. The wise, the prudent, the prophets, kings. All they would have is is questions. And so Jesus cries out and said, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. First Corinthians 1 25, the Bible says that, that, that the foolishness of God is wise within men. The 70 were successful for simply believing. And as they return, the Lord doesn't rejoice, but he says, rejoice in this. His spirit can't contain. You know, uh, uh, do you have a topic that, you know, do you have a topic you might be at a bonfire or talking to a friend and you're, and you're having a discussion and, uh, and all of a sudden the word comes up, a topic comes up, and all of a sudden dry eyes turn into gushing eyes. Happens to me. When my father passed away and we had, we had a memorial service for him, and the first song that we that we played as people were settling down was Amazing Grace by Phil Wickham. And this, those first four notes of the piano. I can barely I can barely we 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 have we have that we have that music in my car and as we drive sometimes sometimes we still Fast forward the track. Can't stand it. Can't stand it. I led my father to Christ, and when we walked into his room, uh, and he had passed about a half hour, half hour before, I am telling you that you could you could feel the presence of the angels that just went. <laughs> and it brings tears to my eyes. And here's Jesus. Here's Jesus. Goes from having a discussion, but when he says the words. To these babes, rejoice not about what happened, but rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Eruption. Eruption of emotion in his spirit. He can't even stand it. He has to begin. Let's talk about the promise of God as we say it. We think of salvation many times as being saved from the penalty of sin. And it is. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. But to him that worketh not, Romans 12, 4, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is kind of righteous. It is. Salvation is, is being saved from the penalty of sin. We are. We know what Jesus did. We, we know what he did. We know about the cross. But our focus in salvation is almost always from, from, from this viewpoint. We, we get stuck in our minds and looking at salvation from, from down here. But we don't really think about it. Listen, it would change how we live if we thought about it as to uh, what's happening in heavenly places. It's a big difference. We look at it from looking down. But from heaven's perspective, listen to me, from heaven's perspective, salvation is all encompassing. It's all encompassing. We'll give you an example. You see a man drowning in the ocean. You are an excellent swimmer. You go out to save him. His head is barely visible as it occasionally bobs up from the ocean. You reach him and you manage to pull him up from the surface. You're able to keep his head above water so he can breathe. Have you saved him? Being saved. Being saved. 
I mean, you probably have what well, you probably have. You probably have saved his life. Listen, I, 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 I almost, I almost drowned in in, in Saint Saint Thomas by jumping on a skinny Arabian guy and almost drowned him. This man, yes, I see you say I, I have saved him, but then the man makes no attempt to bring him in. Simply satisfied that he's alive. And many times from, 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 from our earthly viewpoint, that's what salvation is. We're, we're saved from the, from the penalty of sin. Many times that's all that, those are all the thoughts that possess our mind. But understand from heaven's viewpoint, it's very different. The work of salvation that he started from Jesus' perspective will not be brought to completion until we land on heaven's shore. Salvation is all encompassing. And I believe that in Luke chapter 10, when as Jesus began to uh, began to share this truth with them, but I believe at that moment in time, Jesus sees, Jesus sees his children not just saved from the wages of sin. Re remember, it's everlasting life. Even listen, John 3:16 presents the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That's salvation from the wages of sin. But it doesn't stop there. But have everlasting life. Death is eternal separation from God. I believe, listen, I, I, I believe Jesus just couldn't stand it as he talked about his, his children immediately on. Remember his promise, John 14, 3, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's the promise of God in salvation. Salvation is, 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 is not, not just my salvation out in the water, but it's bringing me to a place where I finally feel safe, and that place is with our Lord and Savior. That's his promise. Let's turn to John chapter 17. John chapter 17, if you would. We've got to cover some things. Oh, maybe we done. John chapter 17. We'll look at verse 11 and verse number 15. We talked last week about the power of God in John chapter 10. Listen, for myself, I wouldn't even need to go any further than John chapter 10. As a child, I can receive that. I can receive that from when I get saved. I'm in him, I'm in his hand, he's in the Father's hand. That's good enough for me. But I accept the fact, I accept the fact that it requires some discussion. John chapter 17, verse number 11. Jesus says, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. This is Jesus coming to the Father. This is Jesus coming to the Father. He says, Holy Father, keep through thine own name thou whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. What? Listen, listen. When we talk about verses like John chapter 10, and we talk about we talk about the power of God, his power and his keeping ability is seen all over the scriptures. First Peter 1 5, we are kept by what? We are kept as long as we keep doing good things. We, we are kept as long as we stay in the same church. We're, we're kept by the power of God. Reserved on the salvation. Jesus said, Lord, I'm not going to be here much longer. You know that. And Father, I'm, I'm, I'm tapping out. Everyone that you gave me is going to say, I have kept. But now I'm not going to be here, Father. Now, Father, I, I look to you that you would keep them through your name. I suggest to you today that, it's, that it's, it's God's name that is on the line, not mine. Verse number 15. 
I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them. Man, if we haven't gotten to the place that we don't understand that God's able to keep us, then we're still bothered. Then, then, then we're still bothered. Subject to the, to the world. Father, your name is on the line. Father, you keep them from the evil. I believe from the moment that I got saved, from, from, from the moment I was quickened from death onto life, and the chasm was removed, and, and the penalty was paid, and I stepped into Christ. I believe that what I gave to him from day one, he's able to keep that, which I committed unto him against that thing. I just believe that I'm a child. In fact, let's turn to we gotta cover we gotta cover some verses because uh, we gotta get to we gotta get to the picture in heaven. First Peter 1 5. Do you love the word of God? Yes. First Peter 1 5. I'm in second Peter. Bad teacher, bad teacher. Have exercise the beam. Yeah, first Peter 1 5. The Bible says who are kept by the power of God through through faith unto salvation. Ready to be revealed in the last time. Last time? What's the last time? Come on now. This, this idea of the Father, the Father being powerful enough to keep us, is easy for a child to understand. The last day that we're here. The last day that we're here. Well, my, my understanding of the you know, what I'm is that there are, when you read 1 Peter chapter 1, the first 12 verses don't tell you one thing to do. They just tell you everything that you have. And the Bible's talking here about, in verse number time, talking about, about the end of our faith and the salvation, verse number nine, uh, receiving the end of your faith and the salvation of your soul. And then he's going to Jesus for the gospel of God. Exactly. So, so listen, there's, there's, there's bobbing, there's, there's bobbing in the water. And then there's the then there's the end the end of time and the, the ultimate what the ultimate redemption redemption we'll get there in a few. the redemption of the purchase redemption uh, I'll get that myself we are kept by uh, Philippians chapter one verse number six Philippians chapter one verse number six Philippians chapter one verse number six. Paul says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until, until, until when? When we finish the day where Christ comes. comes. Come on. To the day of Jesus. When Christ comes. Right. I mean, listen, listen, children. These are these are not difficult to understand. It's it's when it's when the wisdom of men think it's greater than the wisdom of God, the topic gets confusing. That's when it gets confusing. Being confident of this very thing, he was has has God begun a good work in you? He'll be faithful to complete it. He'll be faithful. Listen, it he'll be faithful. Where does it say here that, that it requires my faith? He will be faithful. If I understand the scripture correctly, it is, it is what, what, what the son said to the father. Father, it is, it is your name that's on the line. Ephesians chapter 1. Just one look back. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Let's go to the Bible stories. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. In whom also, uh, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest down payment, which is the earnest of our inheritance until 
the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his Lord. Listen, I'm a, listen, I tell you, a nine year old could break this down. A nine year old could break it. We understand that the work of salvation from heaven's viewpoint is always all encompassing. God just stand with a nasty, listen, thank God, thank God that he died on the cross and, and that the wages of sin, that the, the, the chasm of that song that I was still with I was just playing it with the, the, uh, living hope where the song starts out and he says, he says, how great the chasm that, that lay between us. He abolished that. He abolished that. And so from understand that, that Jesus in Luke chapter 10 is letting you know when he thinks of salvation, he, he, he fast forwards. He fast forwards and he, he can't even wait for the day to receive you unto himself. Salvation is not complete until he returns to claim that which he has purposed. purposed. Woe unto any man Woe unto any man, woe unto any power, woe unto any principality. Isn't that what Romans chapter 8 says? Woe unto any man, principality, power, who would seek to take that from the Father's hand. Childlike faith is not going to go and understand. In Luke chapter 10, he gave him a promise. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. I will be with you You know what the Bible talks about those kind of verses in the, in the English language. So, you know, the majority of all those verses are they're all, all of what we call and what we call the what we call the aorist tense. And what it means is we said us before we talk about we talk about I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the mailbox and we 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 see that as one giant step. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to stock the shop and we see that as, as one step. God doesn't see that one step. That's in the aorist tense, and what it means is I'm gonna be with you. Every step as you go to the mailbox. That's what it means. I'll be with you. Listen, the steps of the righteous. Who's that? That's your man. We are the righteousness of God in him. And God said, the steps, I'm not, listen, God said, I'm not letting him on the step. Every step, I'm not letting you out of my sight. I love it. Doesn't it be in chapter 1, just kind of verse 13, where just like breaks salvation down, right? In whom he also trusted. After, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom, in whom after you heard it, what? In whom after uh, you believed. In whom after that you received the Holy Ghost. What happened? You get saved. The seal, indication of ownership. You're mine. I purchase you in my own blood. Paid in full, indication of, of authenticity. It's also a seal of warning. It's a seal of warning. Don't mess with this person. Don't mess with this person. It wasn't Pilate who put his personal seal outside the tomb. Don't mess with this. This is my seal. Jesus can't wait. To drink with you. The Gospel of Matthew, after the after the breaking of bread, the Lord's Supper, Jesus will utter these words: "I shall not henceforth drink. I shall not henceforth drink of the fruit of the vine again." To when? To the marriage supper of the Lord. All drinks are on him. Can I say that, Rick? It's what the Bible teaches. He gave us a promise. Every step is ordered. <clears throat> While we're here in the book of Ephesians, I got about, I don't know, 12, 15 good minutes. While we're focusing on our salvation from heaven's view, uh, let's let's stay here for a second and understand um, what things look like from above. We're going to be in Ephesians. We look at all these verses and who we were. 
Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 3. Just stay in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 3. The Bible says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You were no different than anybody else. You were. Listen, before you got saved, you were you were no different from God's, from heaven's view. From heaven's view, no different. Still falling short. Still no deal as far as salvation is concerned. No deal. Verse number 12. But at that time, you were without Christ, being alienated from the commonwealth. Paul's writing to, Paul is writing to Gentiles. Talking about the, 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 uh, the relationship with the Gentiles versus the Jews. Verse number, but at that time, you were without Christ. You, you, were, you were part of the of, of, the, of the religious infra, uh, infrastructure, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's who we were. That's who we were, separated apart. Verse number 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity and the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make it himself plain one new man, so making peace. Verse number 16. That he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain, having slain the enemy. That's who we were, folks. You who were dead in trespasses and sin, you could cross this if you wanted to. Men try, men try, can't. How great a chasm that stood between us! Not possible. We were dead. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, You have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. You have the quickened. September of 1979, I walked inside West Palm Beach County Jail, facing 10 years in prison as a dead man, and walked out alive. Yes. Walked out alive. That's who I was. Now I'm saved. Amen. And I believe that till Jesus comes. Now that I'm in him, I will live, I will move, and I'll have my being. And if I do good, I'll get reward. If I sow to the flesh, I'll get no reward. But I'll be saved, yet so is my fire. That's what the Bible teaches. Not going to present anything to you. That I don't believe the Bible teaches. Who we are, chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. That's why I say, listen, we got to we got to keep we, we, we got to stop focusing on, on salvation from this perspective. We got to see it more from the heavenly perspective. Verse number seven, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, uh, the forgiveness of sins uh, according to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his grace. So we'll talk about amazing love next week. Verse number 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Salvation from, from, salvation from heavenly places is all encompassing. We're not just we're not just bobbing on that seashore having just been saved. From his perspective, we won't be saved till we land on heaven's shore. Verse number 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints is. We 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 gotta stop seeing things from from we we gotta get up. We're we're seated in heavenly places. Heavenly perspective. Chapter 2, verse number 6. And he has raised us up together and made us to sit. You haven't had children, you haven't had to make your child sit. We just got we just we just got a puppy. Oh, she's three years old. Gotta make her sit. The 
Lord, the Lord just says he's able to do it. He makes us to sit in heavenly places. That's who I am. But understand, Ephesians 2, 15 from 17, that he, he abolished, he abolished this. We were enemies with God. Enmity, same Latin root when we get the word enemy from. We're, we're in the state of being enemies. Had Jesus, had Jesus, he is the way, the truth and the life. Had he not? Sometimes when you see things from heavenly places, things get clearer. Because what we say on earth has to be in agreement with what is being said in heaven. Understand that. Listen, listen, you can think you're a rock star. <laughs> Talking to old, old Kenny DeFusco, thinks Elvis is alive. You can think that, Kenny DeFusco. <laughs> got some land for you. Right. Listen, we can, we can say whatever we want to. But listen, what we say, what we say on earth has to be in agreement with what's happening in heavenly places. I would suggest to you, and I understand I'm, I'm, I'm being recorded, and, and listen, listen, heaven and earth must agree, even for you to get saved. Heaven and earth, earth and heaven must be in agreement that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. The word confess means what? Means to say the same thing. Means to say the same thing. You're in the police station. You've been arrested on uh, suspicion of robbing a bank. You go in there. You say, listen, I'm not confessing that. But you walk in there and they say, listen, man. Listen, man. We got you on camera, see? We have a lady to put the finger on you, see? <laughs> now, the guy, now the guy, he, he begins to sweat. Right? Did you do it? Did you do it? She goes, you're right. We, I confess. I confess, I did it. He is now, uh, he is now agreeing with what is being said. We can't just, we can't just, 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 just believe in any old Jesus and get saved, not according to Scripture. I understand that's not possible, but that's what the Bible teaches. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, you gotta, you gotta believe in the Jesus that God sent. Not the Jesus that just that just loves and forgives. Not the hippie Jesus. So what we say down here concerning this topic, whether you whether you lean to like a like a Calvinistic view, you know, Calvin would say security is a logical consequence of the doctrine of perseverance of the saints. Yes, Calvin would say yes. Mr. Almini would say salvation and eternal life is security Christ and protected from all external forces. But, but is conditional on remaining in Christ. As I, as I even read that, it hurts my head. Protected from all external forces, but is conditional. Show of hands only, because I don't, I don't have time to really get into this. Show of hands only. The prodigal son, was he saved, lost, and saved because he was in his father's presence? He asked for all of his inheritance. When he left his father's presence to go and live a life of rioting and fulfill the desires of his lustful, uh, uh, you know, then when he comes back, is he saved again? So my question to you is, the prodigal son, was he always saved or did he have a period of being lost? So I would say, if you believe the prodigal son was always saved, raise your hand. The Lord saw the end from the beginning. So you believe he was, he was saved? Well, can I throw the word backsliding in here? Sure you can. Sure you can. That's why I believe he's saved. Sure you can. And he even came back home. I don't want to be, I'm not your son. I'll come back as a servant. Okay. And so he understood the father's love, but okay. he backslid. Sure. 
Now, safe, safe to say, could be wrong. Safe to say, were there other people that may have been aware of when the son got his inheritance and he took off? Would other people have been aware of the things that the son was involved in? Of course they were. Of course they were. Yeah. So, so, so we see people all the time. We see people all the time that once went to church and now we see them and they're, they're out in the world and, and, and look, listen, the father was never done. The father was never done praying for the son. Right? Never. Never. And the, looking for him. And looking for him. In the, in the father, in the father's eyes, the son was on heaven's shore. But man, man sees things. Man sees things from down here. Can you deny the Lord to your hands? Can you deny the Lord before men? And be saved. Yes. Oh, Show of hands. Show of hands. To deny the Lord. Can you deny the Lord? That's Can you deny the Lord, knowing what the scriptures teach, mm -hmm. and be Christian? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Deny my name. I don't know you. Don't can know you have you. a Christian? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes. Peter did it. Peter did it. What I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to, to, to suggest to you is that, that what we know doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't that tell us that sometimes we need a little more understanding. Sometimes we need a little more, uh, a little more insight, a little more wisdom, because what we say is happening down here must be happening in heaven. So you have to ask yourself, just as Nicodemus did, Nicodemus said, "What? He said, listen, boy, again, what are you talking about? Can a man, can a man enter his mother's womb a second time? That's that's absurd. Oh snap! Now, now for the Lord, for the Lord, it worked out because he was talking about he was talking about a a, a, a different birth, right? He was talking about spiritual birth. Yeah. But listen, we need to understand that when when we get saved." This is gone. He abolished this in his flesh. This chasm, it's gone. I was dead. When I got saved, I was alive. That's a matter of record. My spiritual birth is a matter of record. Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 20, it is written once for all time. That's what, listen, that is not what Leo said. That's what Jesus said. Rejoice that your names in the perfect tense are written, etched forever. Problem here is, is, is in our looking for agreement, things happen when you get saved. Angels start rejoicing over one sinner that gets saved. In the presence of God, angels are rejoicing. What's also recorded, John chapter 5, verse 24, Verily, verily, I say to you, He that believeth on me and him that sent me has everlasting life, and shall not come into con condemnation, but is what? But is past. But is past. Passed from death unto life. If we think that once we're passed from death unto life, that we can now kind of kind of tiptoe jump back across this chasm. Listen, let's use our hands. You you can't you once you're born, you can't be unborn. It's a matter of record. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine. If it's X, what happens to it? What happens with it? Do, do, do angels say, no, nah, listen, no, nah, listen, the rejoicing, cut, cut, cut the rejoicing. Jesus said, listen, listen, when I leave, I'm not just going to go, go hang out at Hallelujah Square. I'm going to prepare a mansion for you. So as Jesus in heavenly places, based on what I'm doing, is building, building my mansion. And then, and, and, and then old, old, old Gabriel walks in and says, Jesus, yeah, stop that mansion. Now shut it down. 
Yeah, so you must you see the end from the beginning, Lord, but you must have made a mistake. But just take that down. Could you uh, just take the model and just miss no? I mean, come on. We we need to think better than that. What we say down here has to agree with what's happening in heavenly places. And and what Paul says when I get saved, already from heaven's perspective, I'm sitting right there. That's what the Bible says. I'm sitting right there. Can you deny the Lord and be saved? Listen. You would have to listen. I don't even know if you could get me to sit. I'll be honest with you. If you could get me to sit and listen to a lesson on how you think that Peter wasn't saved when he said that. He said, I don't, I, I don't believe I didn't sit in that conversation. That's ridiculous. I would say that's apostasy. You need to be careful. We, we present this, his power, his promise, the picture in heaven. What we say, we, we can't just say things. What we say on earth has to be in agreement with what's happening. And if you can, listen, if you can, if you can justify this, this chasm, this chasm where all, where all, where all of a sudden you reach the point where a guy like tosses you up, you can't get back. You can't get back. Because look, once you're alive, you can't be dead. Because old, old Lazarus said, Father, Father, send my brothers. Send my brothers. I don't want that. You, you, we can't just tiptoe across, across heavenly places and have it our way. <coughs> what we say on earth has to be in agreement with what heaven is saying. When you're in God, you're Christian, and then you get something whatever, you turn away, you don't presume to do that, but you turn away because the Bible says it is a weak thing. Sure. It is a weak thing. Well, this, listen, we sort of the flesh, we, of the flesh, we, we read corruption. We sort of the spirit, we, we, of the spirit, we read life everlasting. The things that pertain to everlasting life. Uh, the, 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 the good things. Um, and yes, listen, but listen, we, I love what, I, I watched, I watched, I didn't make it on Wednesday to hear Dustin, but I, but I watched it. And a lot of things, a lot of things he said, I could hear myself saying. I like what he said, you should never say, you should never say that God isn't working in you. Mm -hmm. You should never say that. Because yeah. the Bible says when you get saved, what? It is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And I believe no matter what state you're in, though we may not see it, God is working. Then we were washing. Jesus went looking for him and left the others. How does he get him? What about Judas? Yeah. He remorsed, but he hung himself. Did he go to heaven or hell? After. See? Yeah, on the other side. Um, we talked about John the Baptist a few weeks ago. I believe John was going to be there. He's called the son of perdition. And that's all we're concerned about. Yeah. yeah. Listen, we, well, well, we have to be. There's a controversy on that. Yes. But see, we, we, we have to, we have to, um, uh, we, we, have, we have to be careful what we say. Yes. We, what we say has to be in agreement. With what's happening in heavenly places, or 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 we're not right with God, and we need to be careful what we say. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, this this whole topic to me is soft and, and and the purpose of His love. If we're not rooted and grounded in His love, so great a love, marvelous love, what manner of love <laughs> covers a multitude of sins? Did you know that? Oh. Somebody else has sinned too. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for your word. Uh, uh, Lord, your, your word will endure forever. We are born again not by incorruptible things, but by incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Lord, prune us, try us, that we may come forth as gold, and that people would see your image in our lives. Help us, Lord, to not just not just know know what to say, but Lord to Lord to know how to prove it to ourselves, um, to know how to know how to share with others the wonderful truth that you have us, the wonderful truth that that you keep us, that you're the Almighty Fortress that goes before us, all powerful. Bless the worship and preaching to come. We pray in the mighty mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>